Hey guys, it's Come for MC here again. Welcome to our 14th LBP tutorial. This is the second part of a three part series on Sackbots and working towards making Sackbots more intelligent. Last time we talked about just animations through Sackbot recordings. Today we're going to be talking about automation, so doing some more complicated things with Sackbots that turns out to be a little bit more malleable. So what we have here is I have a Sackbot set up. He doesn't have anything special about him, he just has a tag and a controlinator on him. And I'm going to put some things on that controlinator in a minute, but basically we're going to make it so this Sackbot runs along here, jumps up onto this platform, jumps over that little barrier, jumps the gap, and then when he gets to the end he's going to turn around, and then he's going to jump up onto each of these platforms in turn, jump over and shimmy across this little dissolve pad here, I don't know what you want to call it. And then he's going to turn around and do it all over again. Okay, so the way that we're going to have the Sackbot be aware of where he is, uh, I use that loosely, it's just taking in information from the surroundings that tells him what should I do next. We're just going to use some tags. Okay, so I'm going to put a tag down, I'm going to make them all blue just to be consistent, and I'm going to make this one say right. That's going to indicate that when he hits this tag, he's going to run to the right. Okay, so he's going to run to the right. And then when he gets to, say, about there, he's going to jump. So I need another tag to say, okay, it's time for you to jump. And so we'll call this one aptly jump. And then we're going to need a couple more because he's going to jump several times throughout. Okay, so he'll jump at the edge of, end of this ledge. He'll land on the other side. He'll jump over this gap here. Yeah, we'll put it about there, and we'll leave it at that for now. We'll just get that working, and then we'll complete the rest of it as we get to it. Okay? So the way that we're going to communicate that there's a tag there to the Sackbot is obviously using tag sensors. I'm just going to make sure that I can rotate these 90 degrees. Flip it over, all the way over. We'll decrease the radius a little bit. Eh, we'll say about 10. And then we can cut the rain... the radius angle down to 45 because we don't need anything bigger than that and this first one is going to be run to the right okay so if I look at this when the sackbot runs over that tag it's the radius is just big enough to pick it up and it'll trigger this tag sensor okay now to handle all the movement the left right or not moving at all I'm going to use a three port selector and I'm going to make the top one be default so not moving and then the bottom one, or the middle one, excuse me, the middle one will be for running to the right. And then we'll have to make another tag sensor for running to the left. And I haven't set up any tags for that yet, but I can definitely rename this uh, left, and it'll work as soon as I set up my tag. Okay, so again, top is not going to do anything, so we don't wire that to anything. Middle is to the right, bottom is to the left. Now to convert these into something that we can use with the Sackbot, we use a direction combiner. So I just put down a direction combiner. I wire up my right to the positive, my left to the negative, because that's what the, that's what Little Big Planet has determined: right is positive, left is negative. And then I just take that wire from the direction combiner and wire it up to the left left stick, the the controlinator's left stick there. So now if I unpause here, he's going to run to the right. Oops, I forgot to set up a jump, but you'll see that when you run to the right, it'll keep running because there's nothing telling him to stop running to the right. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. Just move this up a little bit. And now to set up a jump, I'm going to need another tag sensor for jump. So I'll just change this one to jump. And now when you actually jump in Little Big Planet, if you tap it, you do like a little baby jump. It's really unimpressive. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn, once this signal or this sensor activates, it's going to turn on a timer for 5 seconds, so, or 0.5 seconds for half a second. So that'll simulate pressing and holding the button, which will get you a normal jump. And we'll input type start countdown. So what's going to happen is as soon as it turns on, it's going to start counting that timer down and it's going to be on. And it'll turn back off once it has completely run out of time. So that's a nice way of turning something on for exactly a certain amount of time. So there he's got his three jumps all down pat. And then he just keeps running because there's nothing to indicate that he should stop running to the right. 
Okay. Now we can really simply set something up so that he stops running to the right by just putting another tag over here and just name it left because we've set up our logic according, accordingly so that when he hits a left tag, he'll change directions. Okay, so let's see him. He's going to run through, jump, jump. And then when he hits that one, he's going to turn around. He's got a little bit of momentum, so you need to make sure you don't have it right up against the edge. But otherwise, everything is working pretty well. Now, we want to make it so that when he gets to this next spot, he jumps up onto the ledge, but we don't want him to jump the first time he passes here. So we're going to have to do a really simple circuit board to make sure that he doesn't jump uh, when he's running to the right and instead only jumps when he's running to the left. There are a couple ways we can do this. I'm going to do it in a specific way that'll that'll always work. Um, I just set this up so it's a, a tag sensor that runs from 20 to 30 radius and the angle is 180. So when he then the sackbot hits that green trigger radius, it's going to turn on a timer for five seconds, for example. Okay. Now the important thing here is that. You have to make sure that your sackbot has a tag on him so that you can communicate in the level. Um, I just put a green tag on it. It's really simple. Okay, and again, we want him to jump, and we only want this tag to be on when he has already passed it. Okay, so if we run this through, he's off to the left running through this all, and then he's going to trigger this. It'll turn on for a few seconds, allowing him to jump up there just like we would want. Okay, and then I need him to jump a few more times, so I'll just put a few more jump tags on here. Now notice, because we pointed our tag sensors down on the sackbot, when he runs right underneath this blue one, that blue one over there on the right, it doesn't trigger it. So, it works out kind of nice that way. So let's see if he turns, changes directions, jumps, oh sweet, and it's working. Okay, now, he didn't grab because we obviously haven't set up any grab logic yet. And his momentum carried him right off of this platform over here. So I'm just going to extend this a little bit so his momentum doesn't drop him onto the floor. Because once he hits the floor, he's no longer in this area where he is aware of his surroundings. He has no more tags to communicate when he should do what. So once he drops off of this area, he becomes just a stupid sack bot and he doesn't do anything that he's supposed to. Okay, so I've set up a piece of hologram material here. I'm going to name this hologram grab, or the tag that I put on this hologram grab, aptly named. And so when he's in contact with this hologram, because it has that tag on it, I'm going to make it so that he starts this grab sequence where he's going to shimmy across. Okay, so I use an impact sensor. Make sure that it requires touching, and the tag is blue and grab, so it matches up. You have to include touching again because we're using hologram material. Just get in the habit of doing that. And then I'm going to use a selector as my toggle. I've talked to before about why toggles with selectors are handy. And then I'm going to make it so when it's on the bottom, nope, we'll go with the top. When it's on the top selector port, it's going to grab. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, and I've actually set this up incorrectly so it's not going to work quite right, but what it's going to do is it's going to cycle through these grab, not grab, grab, not grab. And I didn't realize until right now, oh, I forgot to set up a timer that handles that grab, not grab, grab, not grab. So I'll just put a timer right in between my impact sensor. We'll drop this down to two seconds, set it to forward backwards. And wire that to the cycle on the selector port. Okay, so he's going to run through. He's going to turn left when he gets to the end jump three times and now when he grabs he's gonna grab on and off on and off and because he's holding left the whole time that actually allows him to shimmy across okay and because we've set it up so he resets when he gets back to the start he does that and runs through it again now you'll notice when he did that time when he dropped in or er, and tried to grab on he didn't grab the reason that happened was because the selector port was on the bottom when he hit the grab, when he hit that green dissolve material. We can make it so it resets back to the top every time he jumps, and that's a nice, simple workaround way of dealing with this. So if, when he jumps to go to grab that dissolve, it's going to reset to try to grab again. So 
So right now he is always trying to grab, but because I've set up nothing else that's grabbable, he doesn't grab anything until right here. And then he shimmies across, drops down, turns back to the right, and runs through it again. Now the nice thing about this kind of system as opposed to recording animations is that you can easily extend or add or modify the terrain as you see fit. So rather than him turning to the left there, I'm going to have him jump over this little gap. And then he's going to turn to the left later and then jump back across the gap. Okay, so he just did kind of a little uh, extra leg on this thing, this course he's running through. Otherwise, everything works exactly the same. Okay, now, interesting thing is, because I've set this up to be automated through wireless signals and through communicative tags, I can make copies of these sackbots and they can run through separate from one another and everything works out just as it would with one sackbot. So here we can have two sackbots running through this and it looks kind of cool. It's actually really interesting to put like four or five of them in a row and have them run right behind one another. Um, I planned on doing that but I kind of ran out of time so whatever. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to another level and show you an example of what this looks like in practice. So see you in a second. Take care. Alright guys, here we are in my wizard level. This is right near the end of the second level. I have here a sackbot with some special abilities. So he can do sprint, he can roll, and he can do a jump and super jump. And I just put those on a controlinator and this isn't too far removed from the last video that we talked about. I won't go through all that because frankly we don't have time. And again, you can see that I have tags here. So this one is boss jump. So when the boss gets there, he's going to jump. And then I've got some other tags here. So I've got boss run to the right, boss sprinting, and boss taunting. And I have hologram here so that he'll sprint for as long as he's in that hologram. And then when he hits jump, he'll clear the gap. He'll roll when he gets to that tag. He'll jump when he gets to this one, and that'll send him up to this ledge. We'll turn on these sets of tags, boss to the left, so he'll turn directions. Then he'll roll, jump, and he'll jump all the way over this gap, jump up onto this ledge, and then he'll stop and wait for you and do this little taunt animation that I've set up until you grab onto this R1 pad, and then he'll start running again. So it kind of makes it feel a little more interactive, and I'll show you what this looks like as I were to play it. Okay, so he's going to turn on sprint, jump, roll, jump, up onto the ledge, and then he's going to jump that gap, jump up onto the second ledge, and sit there and taunt you until you grab this pad. And then he'll run through the rest of his animations, and you can imagine that I just have more tags set up that's controlling his different movements. And by making him stop and pause and wait for the player, it makes it feel a lot more interactive. And this is a really nice application of this Sackbot automation stuff that I was showing you before. Okay, so you can do whatever you want with these kind of automation Sackbot communicating things. Um, this is just one thing you could do. I'm sure you guys can come up with a lot of creative things that I hadn't even considered. Um, but the idea, the principle remains the same. You just set up tags and use selectors to select different animations, whether it be running to the right, running to the left, jumping, and whatever. So hope you guys learned something. Take care. Bye-bye. The tutorials will unleash not only exciting tools and objects, but knowledge and the deepest secrets of the cosmos.